Give her a round of applause. Okay. Praise God. And um, by, uh, you know, I can do things impromptu, okay? So please bring one more chair. I, I, let me not say I feel led. I feel like. It's allowed, isn't it? Uh-huh. So please, Brother Damilo Labwari Geshe, please come and join them. Come and join them this morning. Please, somebody help me. Is um, to take this off, uh, bring it to the side here. Yes. When I told Sister Zainab that I am, um, she was going to be in the panel. She asked, "Ah, Pastor, what am I going to say?" I said, "Don't worry, I'm not doing any presentation." You know. And um, I had to explain to her why we um, decided to bring her up. And so let me also explain it to some of us who don't know her. Um, she works somewhere in the federal government, Parastatal. And uh, she also does stuff by the sides. Okay. She's a business woman, you know, and she does stuff by the side. I remember one time like that, that the husband came to a report, is it a report or comment or say something, you know, that uh, the wife sleeps very late at night. She's always on her phone, you know, doing one stuff or the other. So, so that was when I realized that she was actually a very, very serious businesswoman, not just something that, uh, you know, she just does just like that. And you make money from it, do you? Uh-huh. Okay, so, so people, f so uh, uh, you, can, you can be working and doing something by the side. So probably maybe a question pops up around, pops up in your mind along that line, you know, you can ask, answer them. But let us pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this moment. We receive insight and wisdom as we share together the various, all those, mem all the members of the panel of discussion, sense, in the name of Jesus, they speak by inspiration. Thank you. Intelligent questions are, ans are asked and answered. Thank you, Father, for light dawns in someone's heart today. Direction is given. Insight is received. In the name of Jesus, and our finances will never be the same again. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Knowledge is powerful. We receive the knowledge to be able to deal wisely in the affairs of this life financially. Somebody is being released from financial bondage, self-imposed or self-inflicted. In the name of Jesus, uh, the hand of the enemy is taking off men's finances uh, in this meeting. Uh, in, in the name of Jesus, we receive all that you have in store for us today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So, uh, if you want a question, to, if you want to ask a question, please you can put it down okay, and send the... the um, piece of paper to us up here. We will do our best to answer them. Okay? Now, let me start out with the um, uh, the question that was sent in. Actually, the person called. and um, Now, the person's the question is uh, that the person is of the opinion is both an opinion and a question. 
Okay? It's both an opinion and a question. Uh, the person felt that um, the, some of the things that were shared <coughs> in those three weeks that we had, those three sessions, the last three sessions we had, were somewhat more theoretical than realistic. And, um, and the person painted a scenario. He said, well, how about you see someone who is earning 50000 for example, and um, has a family to take care of, has bills to pay, um, house rents, and all, and all that. And the person knows he or she should improve himself but the person doesn't have the funds to further his uh, his or education or to take online courses that so the person also said that these online courses that we say that they are for free many times uh, uh, they don't give you the premium uh, content, you know, they may just give you some to draw you, and then they tell you that, okay, if you want, you know, to learn further the nitty-gritty of those stuffs, you've got to pay some money. <coughs> now, so, so the person is like, can you please um, give us the person knows that, well, yeah, I should sharpen my skills, you know, I should increase my capacity for employment and stuff like that, you know. That can our panelists be more realistic, come down to the earth, be more practical as far as these issues are concerned, and that the person felt that they were just too theor theoretical. Okay, so, <coughs> judging from what the person earns, you know, so how do you, what, 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 what are your thoughts? How much, how much more can you come down to the earth, come down to our level? Okay, so, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So maybe we should start with yeah. some form. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. In um, 2006, 2007, I resigned from where I was working to start my own business. And then, before resigning, my salary was 30,000 naira. And it was, uh, I was promoted as um, the operation manager then. And I think like um, six months after that when I resigned, uh, my salary was increased to 60,000 naira. So when I resigned, I was earning just 60,000 naira. Were you married? Sir? Yes. Did you have any child? Sir? Two people, sir, around me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was earning 60K, no more than that. But I've done my master's in 2002, 2003, University of Lagos. And most of the things I learned, I read by myself. I did self-study. Then I couldn't afford to go to any IV institution for any extra. I learned most of what I knew on the internet. So you are earning 50,000, it's not an excuse. It is your passion, your drive. The question is, do you want to remain in that spot? So you have to find a way out. You have to find it. You have to do self-study. Most of the skills, even t t today, I still read a lot. Most of what I, of now, I'm into consultancy. I used to run a security company before. I stepped out. My partners are still running it. I'm into consultancy now. <laughs> Most of the softwares, the applications, I know how to use now. I downloaded videos from YouTube. Anytime I go to any hotel or any company, and there is free Wi-Fi. I'll just download. 
I have over 60 gig. I have over 60 gig of materials, both hard copy and videos on my memory drive. So I do self-study a lot. So what I'm using to, to survive now are based on self-study. Mm. So it's not an excuse. There is, there is no, except you want to remain in that position. It's not, that is one. Two. How many children do you have now? Three. <laughs> and others. <laughs> How many are you in your household now? Uh, we swing between. No, we are trying to be down to the to earth, right? How many are you in your household right now? We are around eight to ten. Yes. For now. <laughs> For now. Okay. And we manage ourselves, so it's not an excuse, really. It is not an excuse. Are you earning any salary right now? I'm not a salary now, so it's when contracts come. I'm not a salary now, so I don't, I don't live on salary. Have your children dropped out of school? No, they've not dropped out of school. They still go to school. Yes, my wife supports as well. We plan ourselves. We support. And that's, that's the next truth. If you are saying you are earning 50K and you are in the same position, you just have to, you have to do self-study. That's one way for me. I have lived it, so I can tell you. So if you say it's not practical, it's something I've experienced. I was, I remember I was talking with Taufik, um, was it last year? I told him I've been on my own for over 16 years. And yes, am I, have I reached where I want to be? We are still on the journey, but we thank God for where we are. So it's not an excuse. Thank you. Yeah. Any, anybody else wants to contribute to that? Okay. Okay, so um, I'll try as much as possible not to be theoretical, but you see, sometimes it's good when we set some things very clearly. We're all born equal, but we are not all born rich. Someone says that it is a poverty mindset not to see opportunities. It is a poverty mindset, whereas in the same environment, others will see opportunities. A white man came into this country, and on radio he said, I see money on the streets of this country. And the interviewer on radio was asking him, where, how? We can't see the money. He said, I can see money, can't you see it? I can see money. And then when he broke it down, he said, I see people, I see waste. I see people and I see waste. Those two things, I heard that interview myself, I heard it. Now, back to um, the person who earns 50,000, who has a family. I like you to see people. I like you to see opportunities. I said something last week about looking for gaps, filling gaps. There are so many people who need your service. Service is one of the cheapest things you can do without capital. Because again, a lot of people will say, I need money to be able to start up a business. Just errands, you don't necessarily need you know, capital. Sometimes some of the services, people can pay you upfront or even give you a percentage of it so that you can perform the service. Some people are looking for uh, those who can iron for them. Talking about adding to your skills, you don't necessarily have to do online study as well. Do you realize that a lot of people are willing to give information in this our environment? Someone Someone I heard about who cooks for people said she learned how to cook by going to the market and speaking to the uh, market women. Say, I want to cook ofeala or whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, in fact, you will ask one person and 10 women will answer you and we give you how to do it. The same thing goes with cars. Do you know that if you walk up to a mechanic workshop, sometimes, I mean, depending, you can, you, you can actually learn from them. If you ask one or two questions, they are willing to give it to you. And if you probe further, 
if you decide that, okay, you know what, I want to learn on that. You, if I am able to learn, I'll bring customers. You can bargain that, you know, I may not have all the means to pay you for training and all of that, but I can bring, I can introduce customers. I can be your marketer, knowing that he will get more customers. Why not? He will be able to, you know, um, train you as well. You have time on your hands, even if you don't have money. You have time. You have time on your hands. Mm -hmm. And if you have time... Me? Sorry. You have time on your hands, just like every other person. If you earn 50,000 Naira, within that your office environment, you know you can speak to people. Find out what they need. Find out the, you can do car wash for somebody. There's so many things we can do in this environment. You can shop for people. You can earn extra income on your way from work. Maybe you pass through K2 or Mount 2. You can shop for people. So the, see opportunities. Another person said that if your problem is money, then money is not your solution. Think about it very well. The day I heard that thing, I sat back and, permit me to use the word, I meditated on it. If you say money is your problem, then money is not your solution. I said, seed, money is a seed. So the 50,000 that you have, what can you do? Um, those who, who, who sell all this Indomie at night, how much do you think is their capital? Is it something that person can also do? You can't sit on 50,000, I understand, you know, and, and take care of a family. You need to think outside of the box. And you need to humble yourself. I think that's, that can also be the major challenge. I'm a big man. I'm a big woman. I can't do this. If you can't do it, then you can't make money. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> so, anybody else in the, on the panel that wants to say something? Uh, Makoji, you want to say something? Okay, please. Brother Mark. Morning, church. Morning. So, I just wanted to add, I know some fund mentioned he was earning 60000 a couple of years back. I, in 2005, I believe I was earning 12000 when I actually got married. So the point is, and I'll just end with that, it's a simple quote. You can have excuses or results, not both. You've got to make a choice. Do you want to make an excuse for yourself? Or you want to sacrifice what it is at that point in time to get the results? Thank you. Praise God. Oh, okay. um, I'd like to share the story of my, I will call him our Megad. He used to be our Megad. On Christmas Day, or was it Boxing Day, I went to the shop and I was talking to his boys and it blew my, his sons, it actually blew my mind. When we got into our estates around eight years ago, he was the one handling the shop in front of our house. And Somehow, there were about four of them on that same street. He's a malam, so you can imagine what he's selling. Biscuits, this one, that one, that one. And one day, he came to meet my husband. He said he wanted to see him. He said he wanted to take another shop on the main road. And my husband should borrow him 100,000 naira or so. 30,000 naira. So, we borrowed him. And he got another shop. And when he started that shop, it was very, I mean, everything was big. Today, the shop can no longer contain his wares. So on that Christmas, uh, Boxing Day, I went to the shop and I was talking to his sons. I said, ah, where is daddy? They said, daddy is in Kirby State. Okay. Ah. So I was joking with them. I said, daddy has become chairman. Though. You, you are now MD. You, you are CFO. That you people should manage this business well. Though. You know, daddy has worked out. And I said, ah, that, you know, when we came, Baba was in front of our house. He said, no. He said that was not where Baba started. He said, he told me, he said, Baba started 
that Baba told them that he started in Suuliri with a small, the cover of a bucket, selling cigarettes. Today, that man's shop, if you look at it, at least it will be worth maybe half a million naira. He started with cigarettes only on a small cover of a bucket. And he has grown to the point where in management circles, this man didn't go to school. You can imagine this kind of person I'm talking about. But he has grown his business. He has transited his business. He has done a succession plan. He has practically handed over the business to the next generation and they are pushing the frontiers. Hallelujah. So, you see, when we look at things and say, ah, something is too small for me. This is a family man in Kebi. Now, when the sons came, they, they could barely speak English. Now, they are conversing very well in English. They are pushing the frontiers. He has taught them how to manage. He has taught them how to market. He has taught them strategy. He has taught them how to negotiate. Now, these two boys, one day you will see one of them will move out and start his own business. He has started a chain of businesses. So, you see, what is in your hands? Do you think it is too small for you? A lot of us are proud and arrogant. Somebody was telling me something yesterday. My sister was telling me the story of one of our cousins who went to South Africa. Didn't know anybody. An agent told him that they would take you to South Africa, you would get a job. He got to South Africa, he couldn't get a job. My sister's friend who housed him got several jobs for him. Ah, I can't do this one. Ah, I can't do this one. Eh, me, I'm a graduate. After three months, he came back to Nigeria, Boshe Lolobo, with nothing to show for it. After three million naira investments to send him there. We are proud. Let's tell ourselves the truth. We know people who cannot do. He said, because I'm a graduate, I cannot go and do. I cannot go. I remember there was a guy that came to my husband then, and my husband said, can you go to mile 12 and carry and use a wheelbarrow? He said, lie, lie. Me, a graduate. See, you need to stoop to conquer. You need to stoop to conquer. You're about to say, Taba, Jamuni, no way. Taba, Sebe, you know, a pepper. And Toma, you are you. When I started earning 20,000 naira, 833 naira as my first salary, I made it a point. I was married. I'm an only child. So you can imagine, I have a mother. I have responsibilities. I'm the first child of my father. So I had responsibilities. But I made sure that a tenth of what I earn, as I read in the book of uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, after my tithes, 10%, let heaven fall, I will save. That was the first amount of money that I used to buy my first shares in my life. You will always have excuses. Trust me. So you need to make up your mind. Is this where I want to end my life? You may need to suffer for some time to get to where you are going. You may need to draw back. Maybe you will go back to one room, face me, I fight you. You know where you are going. You know where you are going. But if you want to maintain your status quo, a time will come. That 50,000 will not even be enough again. And they may not increase your salary. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You see, Holy Spirit has signs. No, people have started getting inspiration. <laughs> they may not lie against the Holy Ghost. People have started receiving. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions. Come up now. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so let's let's. Uh, Some of these questions are lazy mouth questions. Um, but, you know, we'll still answer them. So I won't tell you which one is lazy man so that you will not feel bad if you are the one that wrote it. Okay? I call them lazy man. Ah, okay. When it, the, the challenge with a lot of people is that they want you to tell them exactly what to do. 
That's why it sometimes looks as if it's not practical. But it cannot get more practical than what they are sharing. Do you understand me? So, you want Brother Dami to tell you, you know what? Go on, it is Uber that is selling now. Hey, go on, Uber. You want her to say, no, it's, it is, go and raise chicken against Easter. You know? Such things don't happen. I can't tell you this is what you should engage in because I am not you. You are not me. What they are sharing with you are principles. And principles are what govern life. Unfortunately, the, our educational system has contributed to it because we are taught principles and we don't know, we don't know, we were never, we were hardly ever taught application. So we carry that mindset into life. So someone says, what's that statement you made now? If you think money, if money is your problem, then money is not your solution. That's a principle. You know, I say, so how do I apply that? So you see, expect her to tell you how to, ap what ex how to apply that. No. You sit down. What does that mean? How does that apply to my life? Is that the way I think? You know, this 50,000 naira question was, uh, was the, another issue. Was, so where, am I, where is the person going to get the capital from? Where is the person going to get the capital from? And in, in business circles, they tell you that the last thing you should think about is money. And the last thing you should think about is money. But unfortunately, we still, we, we, we still gravitate towards thinking, oh, I don't have money. The, I, I have no man syndrome. So now, question. In the light of our topic on finance, what light can we draw from Jesus' response to soldiers in quest for financial increase and empowerment? Luke chapter 3 verse 14. Oh yeah, let's open it. What is in Luke 3 verse 14? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Please post Luke 3 14 for us. You guys are slow there. Luke 3 14. Yes, anybody seen it, read it for us. Okay. Okay, I think I have it here. It okay. Says, and the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, and what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think the question is not so clear. Are you asking if we should be content with what we have? Is that the question? I think the person has a problem with being content. The person thinks being content means that you should not, you should not desire for more than you have. Okay, so please, explanation. Anybody, Sister Zainab? <laughs> if you have enough, if you have enough to meet all of your needs, then you can say you want to be content. Take, but the take, issue, take it, take it up. The oh. issue here is not having enough. The issue here is not having enough to pay your bills and, you know. So at that point, you can't be talking about contentment because you don't even have enough to meet your needs. So I, I think um, this scripture may not apply to you if you have bills that you're unable to pay, if there are things you need to do that you don't have money to do. And um, in that sense, for me, I would say that um, being content, like for instance, it, a lot of people have said, it's, it's a lot of times when we, when we have needs, we're, we're looking at someone or somewhere else where that money is coming from. You... you um, Sister Aumi said, if money is your problem, money is not your solution. You need to begin to look beyond physical, or how do I put it, like uh, 
Okay, I'll, I'll just share my um, story, how I started um, doing what I do now. I, I'm not, I used to tell myself that I was not a business person. I, I don't know how to push people to do things. I don't know how to, you know, some people, they don't sell something to you, must buy, even if you didn't want to buy it. I don't know how to do that. So it was, but then I found out that if I, anytime I saved, something would come up and I would begin to touch out of it. And before I know what's happening, the so-called savings has disappeared. You know, and it went on for a while. I started to ask myself, okay, so yes, you're saving to meet needs, future needs. But then again, there's some present needs that um, you, you, know, you can't ignore. So what, what, what could I do to make sure that I don't deplete my savings for my future needs while meeting present needs? And I said to myself, I said, okay, I need to find a way to make sure that this money that I'm keeping multiplies so that... I'm using the profits on it to solve all these other small, small problems that come around. And I still have the capital, so to speak, as my savings. And so I started to pray about it. Like my husband would say, God is a good God. <laughs> I started to pray about it. And I suddenly just decided, um, you know, it came to my heart that, okay, why not try fabrics? Now, I, before then, I didn't need to buy fabrics in Lagos. Um, I don't know how to say this, but I'm a house girl. And then um, we have our kind of fabrics. And when I was getting married, I had plenty of fabrics. In fact, also now I still have some fabrics from when I got married that I have not made. You know. But I love fabrics. And it's something that I guess I, I, um, how I say, acquired from growing up. You know. So I knew that it was something I could do. So I started to make inquiries. I started to ask. And really, if something is on your heart, you will get opportunities. I found someone who was doing wholesale at the time. So I contacted her and I said, okay, this is it. I'm just starting. You know, I don't have so much money and I want to do this thing. She said, oh, no problem. I will help you. And so she sent me some fabrics, you know, I paid and, and I started. Really, for a long time, I was carrying them around. My husband was like, you, yes, you say you're doing business. So one of the first times, he actually brought into church. I said, hey, I don't know if some people will remember. He said, hey, hi hijacking people. My wife sells fabrics. My wife sells fabrics. I'm like, hey, you didn't see anything. You didn't see anything. So that was how it started. I told some people in the office and all of that. Now, um, along the line, I discovered that the prices she was giving me were not the best prices. So I needed, because I wanted to be at least people's first option. So I needed to find a source that was cheaper than what she was giving. So I started asking questions. I had a colleague whose mom retired as a fabric seller in Lagos. So I knew that they had to know people. So I started harassing him. You need to look for people for me. You need to look for wholesale people. You need to. He said, okay, fine. So eventually he got me someone, and that was how I met this guy. We developed a relationship over time, so much so that now if I call him and say, I need 100 fabrics, send me pictures. He can send me 100 fabrics and I've not paid. I might not even pay him for one week. But I had to develop that relationship. Over time, sometimes you will be forcing down my church. I'll say, no, I only have money for 10. Give me 10. I'll pay you for your 10 today. If I need more, I'll come back tomorrow like that, like that. But right now, we have a relationship where I can collect 200 and pay him a week later. But that aside, I, I was still open. And, you know, someone else called me and said, I noticed you're into fabric, so I have someone who makes tie and dye. It's not the market type, you know. She sources her fabric. She, oh, really? Okay. Let me talk to her. Of course, because the person that introduced her to me was my friend. She was also willing to send me fabrics for free to sell and send out her money, relationships. Mm. And then again, you know, as time went on, okay, so she does other things. She said, but then I also discovered that some of the other things she was selling, sending to me, the prices for Lagos, Lagos is you will get the, the cheapest, you know. So I told her, I said, no, you know I stay in Lagos. This is your prices will not work for me. Just leave this one first. Let me focus on this tie and die and, you know, someone else. And then I was willing to help people helping people. So someone else calls me and says, oh, I need fabric, but this is my budget. I'm like, ah, I don't have that type. Of, okay, wait, let me go and look for for you. Between October of um, last year and December, I, I can't even, I've not even sat down to say how much because she would call me and say, oh, I need 10 pieces for my colleague in the office. I need uh, 20 pieces. We are doing a show for something. And I would rush into the market, you know, gather them, send to her, they would send my money. So it's, it's, um, it's, you need to be open to opportunities, like she said. 
Mm. Your, but, but you need to be focused. What, what do you want? If you're looking for something, you will find it. Mm. If you don't, seriously speaking, there's some things people have asked me to buy for them. Seriously speaking. There are not things that have gone out of my way to buy for myself. And I used to always say to myself, then I want to sell the kind of things I like to wear. But you need to be meeting need. It's not about what you want to wear. <laughs> it's about what the person needs. It's mm. about what the person can afford. It's about what the person wants to wear. So if the person says, this is what I have, just enter the market. In fact, sometimes I get to market, they're like, ah, until we have this. I say, no. The person that wants the fabric says, this is how much the person is willing to spend. That's what I want. You know, Amen. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> I think this kind of um, mentality is what actually puts ceiling on most people, including myself. I, I, I've seen it before. For example, in the building where I work, I used to be in that building in um, what was it, 2006, and there's this security man that I used to know there. So somehow, somehow I got another job in the same building about two years ago, and I met this same security man there, the same level, doing the same thing. Somebody that I know in 2006, on that, in fact, the same floor. God, I didn't even know he was there. I was on another floor, then I moved to that floor, and I saw the guy again. Ah, so you are still here. So the guy has been security man on that floor since 2006 because the guy is contented with his wages and whatever he's doing there. We need to actually be hungry with our situation. We need to actually, until we are hungry, we know that we want to change the situation, we we'll continue to remain there. There's nobody that can help. I, I remember my former place of work, too, I was on a particular position for five years. I was enjoying myself, really. I was enjoying myself. Until one time they started recruiting a few guys from abroad. They would come, they would go and become a financial controller somewhere. They would come, they would go and become CFO somewhere. Ah, so it dawned on me. These people that are coming, they don't have the kind of experience we have. They don't have anything. We were just on the same level, five, six, seven. Go to telecom companies, go and see them. So many. They're enjoying the level. Then I told myself, enough is enough. And I got out of the place. So, so until we look at ourselves and we know that, and that is one of the problems in Christendom, because we are thinking godliness and contentment is a great game. Fine. It's a great game. So we just stay there. Most of us should have, will have moved very far. But because we are just contented with what we have, with what we are doing, I will say, let me just continue this way. There's no way that we can move, like I said, until we are hungry. We need to get hungry. Like that, uh, 50, I decided not to talk about that, uh, that 50,000 because <laughs> I was just wondering. Almost all of us started, that, I, I mean, at that level. Nobody started up there. At a point in my life, I, I, I was earning that 40, 30,000. But one day I told myself, I just, I just look around and I noticed I was having so much gadgets and some other things that if I sum it up, I can actually buy a car. So you look at people, they come around, they are saying they need money for business. But check that person, the jewelries that you have in your room. If you sell it, it's enough to start a business. Gadgets that you have as a student, or you are just working. Thank you for that uh, information, iPhone. There was a time in a particular um, uh, fellowship that I used to attend. They were to give people to people that are less privileged. And they mentioned somebody's name. Immediately, everybody shut it down. They said, that person is using iPhone. <laughs> he said, why, why would you give? You said that person is less privileged. He's using iPhone. So what, all, all those gadgets that we have is enough to sell and use it for business. That is it. Okay, let me just add something based on, um, and let me take you from where it stopped. So when you get angry with yourself or with your status quo, the next thing to do is what Pastor was trying to tell us, which is not being mentally lazy. He was actually talking about laziness, but referring to mental laziness. And I think we all experience it in one way or the other. If I ask this question, you get angry with your status quo, you want to move to another level, which my own other level is different from her own other level. So how do I, what do I do? Can you spend 15 minutes a day thinking on how to get to the next level? 
and practical steps. Now, the lady that, or whoever wrote about 50,000 Naira, what will take you from 50,000 to 100,000? It comes with thinking. Because my own sphere, where I operate, is different from where you operate. You might be operating in buying and selling. I'm operating in technology space. So what I need to think about is different from what you need to think about. Take time to be disciplined to think. This is what dif differentiates these big achievers from us, from many of us. Yesterday, I was telling my wife that we need to pray, take some time to pray. Before I told her that, when I was thinking about that, something came to me that if I spend this time to pray, how much am I spending to think? We need to really sit down. 15 minutes before you go to bed, early when you wake up, what are you thinking about? That's the discipline and that's the work we all need to do to move to the next step. Thank you, sir. Sir, I want to go to another direction. The question was actually put to John the Baptist, this scripture that we read. Mm. And if I read it, the first person, the two verses before that, that one, said, task collectors also came to be baptized. And they said to him, teacher, teacher, what should we do? He told them, collect no more than you are required to. Then some soldiers also asked him, and as for us, what should we do? He told them, take no money from no one by violence or by false acquisition. Another translation says, do not extort money. Be content with your wages. So he was referring, to, when those soldiers came to meet him, he was talking, don't extort money. What you are earning, be okay with it. You know, uh, Shegu said something, be hungry. Some people now will resume work and start um, <laughs> extorting vendors. <laughs> Because you want to multiply your wages. <laughs> they say you should be angry. Start extorting. Okay. And you know, you know it happened to us. We work and we are expecting our money from a, whether it's private or public, whether it's Christian that is there or Muslim. You want to collect your money. They will delay it until you agree on what you are going to give them. So he's talking about extortion mm -hmm. and contentment. Don't extort. Be content with what you are earning. That's actually what, yes. Yeah, that's contentment. It's what you are earning. Be content with it that this is mine. Now you can now use it for whatever you want to use it for to increase. Do you understand me? And not extorting from other people to increase yourself. Contentment is, Father, I thank you. I am earning 30,000 naira today. Thank you. Sister Wumi said that, that money is a seed. Thank you for this seed that you have given to me. Now, this is a seed. Question. My, how do I multiply it? Because God expects that I should multiply it. By the time I multiply it, I get to the level of, oh, I'm now earning 50. Father, thank you for the opportunity to earn 50. I give you all the glory. This is another seed. So how do I multiply it so that I can earn more? I get to 100. Oh, Father, thank you. I'm contented. I'm satisfied with the fact that God has given me an opportunity to earn 100. I'm satisfied. I'm not complaining to God. It's a seed. So I asked myself the question. You know, several years ago, we, you know, we, 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 I had, uh, when I look at what I'm earning, I said, okay, Father, thank you. But this thing is, I know that this thing cannot meet my needs. Okay? So, I try to, my wife and I will try and cut, cost, cut, cost, cost, cost. Ah, right now we are on barest minimum. So the next place to go is not to cut cost. The next place to go is to find how to increase it. Do you understand? Okay, let's go to another question. Um, someone says, what about when, you're, when you are self-employed, then you do, say, a, you do daily contribution. 
How do you cover, cover up the days you were not able to go out to do the business based on one problem or the other? Maybe if you're sick, you are not able to end for that day, so you are not able to do your daily contribution. So how, should, how do I cover up for it? That was, um, yes. Was, um, praise God. From our panelists. Hello, sir. You know, um, I'm not good with your bad proverbs. Mm -hmm. You know, in ministry, they say, Ogata, Ogata. If you are self employed, if you don't, if you don't, uh, you know, you will not eat. So if you are sick, it's, there is no special answer to this. You double up your work now to make up. It's as simple as that. There is no special answer. You cannot make your daily contribution or regular contribution because you are sick or something happened. Then when you are back on your feet, you work harder or deny yourself or something so that you can contribute more to that. It's as simple as that. Yes, so. I think it still boils down to excuses. For some of us who work, I took leave um, from the 23rd of December till middle of, next, of this month. But guess what? I wasn't actually on leave because I'm working for someone. How much more if you work for yourself? Some of us, we work I mean, even when you are sick, you still have to get to work. As at 24th midnight, my husband can testify to this, 1, 1 a.m., I was writing a legal opinion, which I submitted. That was next day to Christmas. On the 25th, I was on, on, on the phone throughout on the 25th. I had a board meeting the next day, on the 26th, I was on leave. So you can give excuses. It still boils down to excuses. It's still, you need to jeer up yourself. You can't be lazy. Okay, I just wanted to add to what you said. Um, this day's business is going beyond the days you sit down in a physical location for people to come and buy. I work, so I don't have a shop. I've been longing for a shop. I've discussed with people, but I know that my, where I work, where I live, the logistics of it all makes it really difficult for me to have a physical shop for now. So I'm still praying and trusting God for. But besides that, I don't have a physical, but I still sell stuff. I wake up in the mornings and I have messages on my phone. People have what they call WhatsApp statuses now. I didn't even know about it. It was my Steinlord that introduced me to it. I, I had no idea. But I can tell you that the first day I posted things on my WhatsApp status, I almost sold everything. I almost sold everything. As in, I posted that night. She just told me, she was like, ah. I was like, hey, okay, I'm looking, let's try. By the next morning, I had inquiries. Do you have this one? Do you have this one? And I found out that a lot of times when I've had things for a long time, I don't know what to do, I just put them on WhatsApp. By the next day, people are asking me. So you, you're ill and you can't go out. There's Instagram. Instagram is not for sharing picture. I have it. My, my personal Instagram page, I don't even know how many times I put pictures on it. Use those, those um, what do you call it now? Um, platforms. Platforms. To do what you cannot do physically. Even, mm. even when you are well, you know, it helps, it helps you. Yeah. Praise God. Okay? So, nothing is an excuse. You can always find a way around some things. Okay? For a few hundred thousand naira, what is the best option on the market now? E.g. fixed deposits, treasury bills. <laughs> yes. I, I think, um, because I still discussed this with my wife yesterday, the, the dynamics of our generation is so different. It's, it's always changing. Last year, you could make 11% from treasury bills. Two years ago, you could make up to like 17%. Mm -hmm. yes. But now, today, it's 4 point something percent. Mm -hmm. Fixed deposit is 1 point something percent. So it, it's even below. So the truth is, every one of us, we can't rely on one form of investment or the other. We still need to think. Information is there. You have to look for something that can work, that you can use 100,000 to do. We can't give you the answer to that. That's the truth. We can't give you the answer to that. 
you have to look at your area. Maybe in your area, you might be able to turn 100,000 to 200,000. That's 100% by just selling something. So it's, it's, it's different. Don't think, don't limit yourself by just fixed deposit or treasury bills. There was a time for that. The season we are in now, government policies are changing. And you also need to learn all those things. Don't information news. Why you see um, all these um, octogenarians or what they call them, the old people, all the investment gurus, reading the news, listening to CNN all the time. It's all because they are looking at the current information. They are strategizing. So you also need to... Now, the information they are looking for applies to their space. Your own information might be in your area. So look for information and be ready to do what is needed to make, to make the best of that information. Okay. Let me just say that financial education is very, very important. Uh, that's the main reason why people lose all their money. You see somebody that just collected gratuity and everything just vanish. So number one, uh, either it's a theory we are sharing or not, mm -hmm. let everybody know that they need to get financial education. It looks like theory, but that is the main thing. Because even if uh, you win money by jackpot and you don't have financial education, the money will vanish. If you meet money at home, like your will say, Obole, <laughs> Obolale, you will lose all the money if you don't have financial education. So number one on our list is how to get financial education. And let me quickly also share that we have bookshelves all around and it's not plenty. I mean, the money is not much. We'll be saying, okay, I'm earning 50,000. You can get books for 1,000, 1,500. At, uh, what do you call it? Uh, there's a place there at uh, Surulere. Yeah, and there's one, Latana. Let's get financial education. is very important. Like Dami said, I, I was just sharing with my wife too. I think we just checked with a bank on Friday, and they told us fixed deposit is 0.4%. Yes, it's 0.4. That's to tell you that government is not interested again in people putting that money in the bank, doing nothing. So they are using, they are using every means to discourage people from just putting cash in their accounts. So come and see the way people are removing their money now. Yes, because why will you put your money down, millions of accounts, and 0.4%? Even a treasury bill now, I think it's 5%. And that one is only for institutional investors. Small, small investors, you go there, they will tell you it's not available. It's only those pension uh, funds and other stuff they are doing. So they, what government is doing, the policy is that they want people to create things, entrepreneur. They want money to circulate around the economy. Because people are putting money down in their account. The money is not doing anything. And government is going to borrow. They are borrowing money every now and then. Whereas we have money that's supposed to be in the economy so that it can generate employment for people. So, like we said, nobody will be able to tell anybody, use this 100,000. Unless I forget. We need to be very careful about all these crazy investment schemes that are outside. I don't know the one that is there now. MMM and all those stuff used to be there. I didn't, uh, maybe because of my nature of my uh, job or whatever, when MMM started, I know that this thing will not last. The first set of people to enter, they will get their money. But the last set, you are doomed. So, and it's not just about MMM. Yesterday, my wife was showing me one. Somebody saying, uh, invest uh, this uh, particular amount of money, I think 100,000, and you get 80,000 back. At the 80,000 interest back, that means 180. So when we look at things like that and you see the interest is crazy, the interest is so high, know that it may be fake. I'm not saying it's fake. May be fake, actually. So you need to check. Because even in the advanced world, how much is the interest? 1%, 1.5, 2%. So when somebody is now telling you, I'll give you 100% of your money back in one month, then you should know that there's a problem. So please, if it's 100,000 that you have, guard your 100,000 diligently. Okay. Well, I think the person's question, my own interpretation, and it's a general question many people have, what can I invest my money yeah, in? Yeah, that was, in fact, some of the next questions, please, indirectly, can we be educated on investment channels? Indirectly, I think that's the question. Yeah. When I, um, and I think that's the, people have money now, some people that have money now, that's, they're looking at what they put their money on. I started my company with 250,000 naira. There were three of us, and each of us have different skills. So like I told you, I told you I was earning 60K, you know. So I was able to save 450K. 
So I started the business with 150K. It was a security business. And we used to buy equipment from China. So the first, uh, I think the first set of equipment we bought was about 10. We bought 10. When we sold the 10, we put everything back. That time I was eating only kote. If I see kote fish now, I run, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because we had to bring down the standard of living. So with 150K, and I'm not sure my wife was working then. I'm not, I don't think she was working then. You know. So with 150K, we multiplied it. We did our business before I pulled out uh, two or three years ago. I'm still part of it, but not maybe just 1%. We've done transaction up to maybe 300 million from 150,000 naira. So we, we bought equipment then. We sold it. We put everything in the game back. We we're not paying ourselves salaries. We we're not paying ourselves salaries. And lo luckily for me, I'm not on the eating side too much. So <laughs> if I eat once a day, I'm okay. <laughs> Everybody's different. So it was okay for me. Then my other partners, they, they can eat swallow. So if they eat fufu in the morning, it carry them. <laughs> 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 for the uh, so Amen. I yes, want sir. us to take note of that. Yes. Sometimes, many times, to be able to go up, you have to come down. You have to sacrifice to come down to the barest minimum. To the, if you have to come down to the barest minimum, your, the Bible talks about Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Endured the cross, despising the shame. The young man that I asked that question, whether he could push, right? It was not even mad. Okay, there was one mile 12. The other one was push uh, water. The guy, I still saw the guy about a year or two ago. The guy was still on the same level. So we've got to learn to come down. That 50,000 naira that you think, ah, is, is too small for you. Ah, that you can't survive on it. You are barely surviving on it. Maybe you need to check again and come down. Okay? Praise God. So, no, we did that survive and that's how we, you know, the business was sustained. Mm. And you, sir, let me mention this. Yes. Um, then later, because one of our major clients, they went down, so it affected, 10 years after, it affected our business, business as well. And we had to look for alternative ways. One of my partners, he started using his car for Uber to survive. Mm. To add to the, the income. income. Now, we strategized again that, okay, what else can we do? Started thinking. That's to answer the question of what do we invest on. So we said, okay, these, uh, these are our brothers from the East. You know, they are very enterprising. Enterprising, yeah. You know, they may not have all the, the ones that are brilliant are very brilliant academically. And the ones that are, that they are not so educated, their business, they are very good with it. So one, that one of my partner, so he, he's in Ladipo now. I have been doing apprenticeship. So we thought, okay, now, these guys, they bring container of spare parts of vehicles from abroad. Okay. Usually, <coughs> a container can be about 20 million naira. And by the time they sell it, I think they make almost about 7 million profits mm. on one container. So what do we do? So what are we planning? This is still in planning phase. So one of the guys, so one of my partner, so he's in Ladipo now, doing apprenticeship with this, our brothers from the East. He's a graduate too. So he's learning how to sell the parts. He too, he would take a screwdriver, remove engine, oil all over his hand and body. He didn't say because he's a graduate. So he has gone for apprenticeship. One of our partner too, he has traveled to Canada. So he's still settling down in Canada. By the time he settled down, so he's the one that will be sourcing for this stuff. He will bring it down here. Like I said, he's still in planning phase, you know. And then all of us will contribute money, he will source, we'll bring it down. 
So that's also a business we are thinking of. I was listening to Warren Buffett around 3 a.m. this morning. You know, I don't sleep very well, so I just listen to things or read when I'm awake. So he said, so somebody asked him, what do I invest in? And that's one of the richest men in the world. He said, do what you understand. Do what you love. So the question is, like Evan said in the beginning, if you are thinking somebody will tell you exactly they've got, you have to, you have to defeat mental laziness. Mm. Apart from thinking, that 15 minutes he mentioned, you have to start writing down. You have to go and visit people, ask questions. I was in Tomiwa's wife house yesterday. I went to see the wife. I know she was working in trade department when she was in the bank. I was asking her, I'm expecting some funds. I want to do some. You, okay, you know there are two types of investments. There is physical investment and there is uh, passive investment. Passive investment is where you put your money somewhere and to just be yielding returns for you. And then physical investment is the one that you actually open a business that you do, that you are trading. So I need to meet her. I, I won't say uh, she's a woman, you know. I need to meet her. I said, we spent almost about two, three hours uh, discussing yesterday on different uh, stuff that we can invest on. So you have to ask questions. Don't be too proud. He said 60% of the time you spent on looking at pictures and chatting to now thinking, how can I make more money? What can I do? You know, I told her, okay, why don't you start this particular business? Ah, she said she doesn't know much about it. Then I took her to a particular lady. The lady spoke with her for about two, three hours, and then she has, she's doing that business now, and she's doing well. So you, no, you have to think, and you have to write it down. There is no excuse for failure. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. How legitimate is Forex trade? Can someone bank on it?